Welcome to Dot Wave. I'm your host, John O'Wells. Thanks so much for tuning in in this very strange time in our world. And I just want to welcome everybody and really just think about how we can build community in these times and be together. And um, I think this is one of those ways. We can have good conversations and share how we feel about what we're creating, the passion behind it. And it's really kind of what this podcast was created for. So I'm glad you're here. I'm really excited about this week's guest. His name is Omri Cohen, and he is special to me because he's kind of the reason, or he's one of the reasons uh, why I got into modular synthesis. He is an absolute expert level synthesist, especially in a piece of software called VCV Rack. Some of you modular geeks might know about VCV Rack, or maybe that was your gateway drug. It definitely was mine. Um, VCV Rack is free, and it's open source, and it's a great way to learn synthesis and learn how to patch and learn what you might want to do in hardware. And I started watching Omri's videos, and his YouTube channel is amazing, and his way of teaching uh, worked for me, and um, I really appreciated what he did and how he got me in. And um, I knew when I started this podcast that he was one of the people who I really wanted to have on it, so I'm very excited to um, now be in touch with him and call him a friend. And uh, you're listening to his amazing music right now. There's a lot of his music on Spotify and Bandcamp. And um, I think you're just going to love this discussion, so let's get right to it with Omri Cohen. Mr. Omri Cohen, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Jono. Hi. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So you're near Frankfurt. Yeah, it's about uh, 50 minutes with the train from Frankfurt. And also the other way is also Darmstadt. It's also a known city, I guess. Yeah, yeah, somewhere in the center of uh, Germany. I live in a small village, and it's uh, really nice because everywhere is nature also. So I'm surrounded by uh, forests, by woods, you know, by fields, um, lots of birds. Oh, it's really nice. That sounds yeah, really, really nice. Really inspiring, yeah, yeah. So have you always lived in a small city, or have you been in, been in larger cities? No, no, I've been also in larger cities. Um, I was born in Israel, actually. Oh, and there okay. I lived, yeah, there I lived in, a, it's not a town, and only recently it became really a city, a big city, but it was pretty big, I mean, it was sort of big, and then in Germany, I moved to Germany, and we lived in Mainz first, which is also quite big, it's not as big as Frankfurt, for example, but it's also, it's on the Rhine uh, River, which is really nice, yeah, yeah. And when did you come from Israel to Germany? This was in 2012, I think, yeah. 2012, okay. so I'm like seven years already in Germany. Um, yeah, I fell in love, what shall I say? <laughs> oh. You know how it is, I fell in love with the, um, with the German woman and I moved to Germany. <laughs> I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. You have a lot of music on Spotify. You have music on Bandcamp, you've got a beautiful album of piano music on Bandcamp. We've got to let the listener hear some of your music. So do you want to set up one of your songs here? We have, uh, we have a couple songs we could play. Yeah, sure. Let's uh, start with Strums, actually. And this is, um, I think it's, the fir- it's, uh, it's for sure the first, but I think it's also the last time that I've created a patch in one of my videos. And I got so much a response about it that I should re- re- record this patch as a track. And that's the first time that I went back to a patch that I made in one of my videos and recorded the whole track from it. It was really nice. It was a video about uh, strumming techniques in VCV. So you can get this uh, sort of guitar strumming effect. And yeah, and it's also the last time. Usually I don't go back um, to patches I've built before. I, I, I just find it hard to understand where I am, <laughs> where I stopped, you know. 
I'm going to have a link to the Strums video on this episode page. And here is Strums from Omri Cohen. Okay, so 
If you would, would you tell us just a little bit of your musical history and kind of what's taken you to where you are now, making incredible electronic yeah. music? Sure, yeah. I started as a drummer, actually, in high school, which was, um, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. Actually, it's a story I, I tell all the time. Two friends of mine, um, one played guitar and the other one wanted to start uh, playing bass. So they came to me... Um, and they told me, listen, Omri, now you are going to be in our band. And I was so happy, you know, I said, yes, I'm going to be your crazy synthesizer guy. <laughs> I had this picture, you know, in my head, you know, like this crazy guy with all the synths and cables and whatnot. But they said, no, you will be our drummer. <laughs> and I said, no, actually. And I said, yeah, sure, why not, you know. And actually, I'm so happy. I'm so happy for this because I'm still a drummer somehow. I don't know. Uh, it's it's following me everywhere, you know. Everything I do, I have uh, rhythms in my head. I'm playing everything, you know. I have to play with stuff all the time, you know. And make, you know, on my legs on the table with the pen. I'm still a drummer in my soul, I guess. And I learned a lot um, through this. Also, I learned a lot about music. It was like a few years like this. We had also a, a punk, a punk rock band, <laughs> which was cool, yeah. But then uh, I left the drums, it's loud. And back then I didn't have the money to get uh, electronic drums. And I started playing guitar, actually. And starting experimenting also with playing piano. And I got me, I got really into classical music, to listening to classical music. And I started playing the piano also and the flute. And I got me a cello also once. I was really, I, 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 I always wanted to play everything. And the best was also at the same time. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I made also electronic music. Actually, I went to a course. I studied um, electronic music production and synthesis for like, for like a year or something like this. And there we worked with Cubase. And I learned everything, you know, and I, I, back then I used to make, I used to listen to Spongel a lot, if you know Spongel. It's Simon Posford and Rajaram, and they make also psychedelic, psychedelic trance. And this is something really big in Israel, actually, uh, psy trance. So I, that's what I, I did also, psy trance, <laughs> for a while. Um, which was not so good, actually, but, uh, yeah. And then I deserted everything and moved to composing for acoustic instruments. So I started composing for piano and guitar a bit and the flute. And yeah, but then one day I saw a post on Facebook from Syntopia about Visivirek. And that's it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. And then where it started and ended for me. <laughs> Yeah, well, we've, you know, we've talked about this previously that your work in VCV Rack, I think is, I mean, like the style of your sharing and videos and YouTube channel, I think is what's been the downfall of a lot of us in getting into modular. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean that in the best way, I'm but to blame. <laughs> you're, you are to blame, man. And uh, VCV was what really got me in. Yeah. 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 It's a, so for the listener who doesn't. For many. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So for the listener who doesn't know what VCV Rack is, would you just give us a little snapshot of that? Yeah, sure. So VCV Rack, it's a virtual um, modular synthesizer. It's free and it's open source. So it's available for everyone to use. And it's a virtual modular synthesizer. So it's a standalone software that you can open and you have modules there that you can um, patch together and make blips and bloops if you want <laughs> or make yeah. other sounds sound design you can record whole tracks only in vcv rec if you want and uh, yeah and it's free and it's open source and it's awesome yeah and it's and it's not a toy you it's know like toy, i was no. No. i was i was really impressed right away of just of the depth of it because i had played with synthesizers my whole life i had heard of adsr i had heard of lfos but to really learn how to make those patches and to learn the signal flow yeah. through a piece of software like that was revolutionary yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah, totally. And yeah. that's what got me, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I could build simple patches, yeah. watch all your videos, <laughs> and uh, 
you know, understand kind of some kind of logic and mentality for how to build. Yeah. And yeah, that's I, what got me. Yeah, I hear it a lot also from rack. people that are that are also a long time with synthesizers. They're playing with synthesizers, they're recording with synthesizers, and they say I only understood synthesis really when I started with modular. Because when you touch, yeah, right. when you see exactly what's going where from the very beginning in each and every step, you understand what is going where and why, then you really understand synthesis, I guess. I mean, uh, it's, totally. it's, yeah, it's not for granted, you know, you have to make everything by yourself and uh, experience everything, every connection. Yeah, that's so true. My first, um, my first synthesizer was a Korg Poly 6. And I was, you know, 15. And I didn't understand it at all. And the only way that I worked with that synthesizer was just to move faders and dial knobs and get a sound I liked, but I had no concept of what I was actually doing. You know, and now how many years later, I'm finally understanding how an envelope works, how a VCA works. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, yeah, you can, no, you can look at really it also. That's a really powerful software. Yeah, totally, yeah. You can also look at it um, also to compare it to music, music uh, theory, for example. You know, a lot of people, they say, I don't want to learn the rules. I don't want to do stuff by, you know, by the book. I want to, to do things my way. But when you learn, when you know the rules, when you know what's going on behind the scenes, the theory of it, it's much easier to break it and it's much easier to think outside yeah. of the box because you have the tools. So also, I think it's also like this in modular, you know, when you are in, when you know ADSR, when you know envelopes, when you know envelope followers, when you know VCAs, and I mean no, I don't mean, you know, like there is never a hundred percent, you know, it's always, there is always something new to learn. But when you understand the concept behind it, you can always go and break the form, you know, and make something new and exciting. So modular is, uh, I think, is the way to learn. And this, in VCV Rec, it's really easy and available and approachable for everyone. So, yeah. Yeah. And there's just such a such a healthy community with it too. Yeah, that's amazing. The community is like, well, yeah. Yeah, I had I had no idea about that part. I got it thinking it's free and I can learn modular. But then once you install it, there's just like so many developers making yeah. real freaky deaky stuff that yeah, yeah. is yeah. is free and is so creative and wonderful. And yeah. these people I think, you know, might end up working for some kind of a manufacturer in the future making, you know, making hardware. Well, most of them are doing this, most of them are doing this really uh, as a hobby, you know, as a, they're doing this for free, they don't expect uh, anything in return. And actually what's interesting is, um, there is a developer, there is a, a collection called Vult. Yeah, right. And he has also now actual modules, Eurec modules. So he had first modules in VCV, which is going the other way around, which is interesting because Usually, when you think about it, you have like um, like all right devices, and you have mutable instruments, and they say, okay, let's make also a port in VCVRIC. But he went the other way around. He had first VCVRIC modules, and now he has them as hardware, which is amazing. And he and and I'm sure that there will be that. more. Yeah, I have also two modules uh, in my case from Vult. And one of them is a dual filter, which is amazing. It's digital. And you have now like 12 different uh, filter types. And yeah, so he went the other way around, which is really interesting uh, because you can, you know, you can develop something for, for VCV, see how it goes. If people have more ideas for it, you can develop it until you are happy with it and then, you know, bring it into the Euric world, which is really nice. Yeah, it's interesting. Man, I just got to hear some more of your music. Uh, would you like to set up another one of your tracks for us? Yeah, sure. So this one is called um, Space Modulator. It's actually the name, if you know Bugs Bunny, there is this little alien that is uh, trying to get the space modulator to destroy Earth. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. He's the dude in the little, uh, yeah, yeah, the little this, green. Yeah, exactly. With the hearse, the red hearse, I think, on the That's right. On the That's helmet, right. yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I've used the, uh, actually I've recorded, it's also, I don't do this a lot, but I've recorded VCV Rex separately. And then I recorded another recording um, from a VST that it's called, it's not a VST, it's a software that's called Ultomaton, 
which is a free sampler and it's also granular and you can do all sorts of things that are um, really interesting. So I took a sample, I don't really remember from what, I think it was my guitar or something like this. And I recorded the whole um, sample, how I, how I modify everything. And then I added both together um, to one track. And yeah.
So those of us who have followed your YouTube channel and watched you make these fantastic videos with VCV Rack, we all saw you get into modular just a couple months ago where you were buying actual modules, Omri. How did this yeah. happen? Yeah, well, <laughs> it was inevitable, actually. Happen, Listen, when you, when, you, when you play with VCV, it's inevitable <laughs> that you will want, you know, the tactile experience. Um, That's right. You start with That's MIDI right. controllers. I also started with MIDI controllers, but you want the real thing, you know, at the end. This was like a gateway drug. You totally. Know? Totally, totally, yeah. And for many, not just for me, but uh, it was close to Superbooth uh, in, April, in May, actually, this year. And I thought, okay, that's it. Superbooth, I'm going f first time to Superbooth, and this will be the time where I start with actual Eurek, with buying a case and buying <laughs> modules. <laughs> because I couldn't hold it anymore, you know, it was... Uh, I. Yeah. I yeah. didn't. I needed it. You know, it was in me. I oh, it was screaming. I it was it's screaming for me. From, yeah. <laughs> so I yeah. So I I spoke with uh, Schneidersladen. Schneidersladen is a um, modular store in Berlin. It's uh, pretty big here also in Europe, and they have lots of things there. And I spoke with them and I consulted them. Actually, the first uh, um, thing I wrote them is about the O coast. I have the O coast or the No coast for make noise. Yeah, and I wanted, mm -hmm. and I was, I, I, in my head, you know, in my plan, it was also inside the case. But it's, it, you have to, to uh, solder and do all sorts of things that I don't know how to do, unfortunately. So I called, I spoke with them, and I asked them if, uh, if they can do this for me, you know, if they can make this modification of the Ocos. And I said no, because you will lose your uh, guarantee. And, and then we started speaking and uh, through emails, and I said, okay, that's it. I'm ordering stuff that will wait for me there when I come to Superbooth. And yeah, I did it. That's it. And I didn't tell my wife anything. <laughs> oh my God. And I went to Superbooth and on the second day, I think it was a Friday or something, I went to Schneidersladen and I picked up everything. I got the case from IntelliJ, the um, 7U case. I don't know, 4 uh, HP and a few modules. And uh, the main module I got, the reason why I really wanted to get the case and to start everything is one of the, it was Morphogen for make noise. So this was, <laughs> this was the big why I went in this direction. I just oh, wanted this module. I needed this module. I was dreaming about it at night. And Superbooth was the, the perfect time, you know, to, to make this step. So I got Morphogen and I got a few 1U modules also for the IntelliJ uh, case there. And I came back home. <laughs> and I still, I didn't tell my wife anything, you know, and I went back home. You're nuts. And she came to pick me up from the train station. <laughs> and she oh sees me. God. I got also the um, the case for the case, you know, so I can take it. Yeah. 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 And she sees me with this and I'm case. like, oh and I'm God. smiling, you know, I have this big, I have this big smile on my face oh. and, but she's really supportive and she was happy that I did it. And, uh, that yeah. is really good. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it's so funny that you, she comes and picks you up yeah. and you're standing she there came with, with our smile son. On your face. She came with our son and he was running. He thought yeah, it was a present for him or something, you know, I had an extra bag, <laughs> But no, oh it was the God. case. Yeah, it was the case. Yeah. He like, sorry, son, this is not for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I also got it. This uh, this time I met a guy that is also in the Visivira community and is building MIDI modules that are um, meant to be mounted in the case and to work control with MIDI VCVREC. So you can have your hardware modules, and next to it you have MIDI modules that you can send MIDI into VCVREC and control them, and it's called MIDI-LAR. And back then it was still uh, in prototype um, um, stage. Um, so I have it also in my case, it's on the top left if you look at the uh, videos. And I use it also, you can just assign it to anything in VCV, and you have a really nice combination of hardware and uh, software, and you can control VCV without even looking at the screen or touching the mouse, which is also really nice. So this I got also in this time and started working yeah, on the hybrid setup. It was not uh, easy, but uh, it's working really nice now. Yeah, seeing your setup move from 
all software to mm -hmm. this hybrid situation, which I also do, yeah. has been really exciting and also, once again, inspiring because yeah. your videos got me running in VCV Rack and then into Modular. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, I feel like you owe me somewhere between five and seven thousand dollars, but maybe we can work yeah, that out at yeah, some other date. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but but now seeing what you're doing in hybrid setup is very exciting, yeah. and once again, it's inspiring all of us. Yeah, you know? thank you. Yeah, thank you. I really I have lots of fun with this, and uh, it's also for me it's really inspiring. And uh, yeah, I can't wait. Uh, can't wait to to make more. You know, to just go even further with this. I have no doubt you will. Yeah. But listen, about the word inspiring, I think that we often say like, so-and-so is really inspiring. I saw that painting, it's really inspiring. Yeah. I ate this sandwich, it was really inspiring. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm talking sandwiches. about like, that sandwich was so inspiring, I just wanna be a sandwich maker now. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, what I mean is the actual kind of inspiration where you inspired me enough to stop watching your video yeah. because I had had it and I had to do it myself right now. <laughs> and yeah. that's, that's inspiration, man. Yeah, thank you. Like, yeah. this is so good. I can't watch YouTube anymore, even though it's Omri Cohen. Yeah. I've got to start working and I, and I pause it and I get right to work on my own stuff. That's so Man, cool. that is inspiration. That's cool, thank you. Yeah. Actually, in the last uh, live stream uh, on Friday, um, someone said the same thing. He said, how can you guys in oh. the chat, how can you guys keep watching this and not run to your own, you know, your own computers and oh. start working, you know? And I was like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Bravo. That's, that's what that's I want. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's inspiration. The, that's the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, I want to, yeah, to share my ideas, you know, to give inspiration to people. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Well, for the listener who has not watched Omri's YouTube channel and is curious about getting into VCV or modular, I can just recommend you check it out because, you know, there's a lot of people sharing knowledge in different styles, but, you know, different people's styles are going to resonate with, you know, different viewers. But this guy's got a way, man. He's got a magic way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about inspiration a little further because that's what I think people want to hear about and that's what this podcast is all about is yeah. where does this stuff originate in your process? How does it work? You've done some of the most beautiful generative patches, which I've heard. Mm -hmm. um, how does it work for you? Where does it start? Well, usually it starts with the module that I want to explore. So sometimes I will say, okay, there's a new module. Let's let's have a go with it. You know, let's play with it a bit. See see what I can I can do with it. And all of a sudden, you know, time disappears, and all of a sudden it's dark outside, and I'm like a few hours, and I have a patch. You know, I have a patch playing, and I enjoy it, so I record it. Um, so usually it starts from a module, but the sounds also. I mean, you can see this also in my in, in my live streams and in my videos, maybe also. That I hear a sound, and it 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 pulls me f further deeper, you know. It pulls me deeper uh, into the sound itself, and I have to get okay here. Oh, this sound reminds me of this. Let's make this sound. Oh, let's make this sound. Maybe it will it will sit in the harmonic, or I don't know. It, it will fit harmonically to this sound, and let's make this. So I'm I'm just like one step at a time. Um, it's not usual that I that I have an idea and I say, okay, this is what I want to do. And I'm going now and sit down and do it. Usually I let them, it's like a conversation, you know, I let the, I let the music, I let the sounds lead me, you know. It's like a conversation I have with the modules and with the sound, never mind if it's VCV or also hardware. Um, it always starts with one patch cable. <laughs> And somehow I find myself surrounded by patch cables and noise and modules and all sorts of sounds. Yeah. On this show, we talk about ways you can support artists and be part of their progress and their success. And one of the ways which you can support Omri is on his Patreon page, which we'll have linked. But also, you can go to Bandcamp and purchase his albums there. 
I want to play a track off of your Divisions album because this was the first way that I um, had found you by going to your Bandcamp page and supporting you by buying this album. This is an amazing album. Would you play a song for us off of uh, off of Divisions? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, uh, I think it will be Hazayot. Hazayot in Hebrew means uh, it means hallucinations <laughs> um, in Hebrew. So. All of this album was inspired and created with stages for mutable instruments in VCVREC. It was all created in VCVREC. And all of this album was with stages most of the time as a sequencer. I just love stages as a sequencer. I don't know what it is in it. I mean, it's just a sequencer, you know, but it's, there is something in this module that just drives me, you know. It gives me, like, inspiration to create more and more sequencers. So all of this album is inspired by stages and Azayot has a lot of polyrhythms inside it. I love polyrhythms as a former drummer also, rhythms and everything. It just, it's, it's, I, it inspires me the most, I think. I always start with a sequence or 99% of the time when I start a patch, it's all, there is always a sequence or an arpeggiator or something like this. Um, yeah, so this is Azayot, yeah.
Isn't it interesting how it works like that? Like the instrument really does have a mind of its own. Yeah. And it's, yeah. you know, that makes it unlike any other instrument. Like if yes. you're playing the guitar, yeah. there's no way that it starts playing itself and starts doing things which you didn't expect. It's much, much more intentional. Exactly. Yeah. With modular, there is a lot of um, um, unintentional, a lot of, uh, um, I will not say mistakes, you know, but it's like um, happy accidents. <laughs> you know, this you say this uh, often about modular, you know, and um, it, it's it's really like having a conversation with the machine. Never mind, again, if it's software or if it's hardware, it's like really like having a conversation, listening to one another, and um, and developing step by step, you know? It's less about, hey, I'm in charge here and you will do what I want. No, it's more about, hey, let's see what, what we can do together, you know? Let's let's try something, you know, and see where it will get us, you know? And it's there is always this us, you know? It's never just me there. It's always this me and an, another thing that is there with me in this, you know, in this uh, mixture of sounds and uh, textures. And there's always this conversation also, always. It's, it's, it, there is never one controlling the other. That's right. Yeah. And maybe, maybe that's what makes it so addictive is that it's so different each time. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's always, there is always a surprise. Never mind if you've done it a hundred times, you will always get yeah. Yeah, something different. Yeah. And it's always interesting. Intellectually interesting, I guess, also. <laughs> it's true. And, you know, about it being intellectually interesting, I think that, and this could be a whole other podcast just by itself, but <laughs> because it's so intellectually interesting, it could become so exclusive and so um, heady yep. that it would really keep a lot of people out. But what I've found, and I think you found too, we talked about this a little bit, was that the community with your Iraq was so welcoming yeah. and so generous yeah. and so inclusive yeah that i've just i i'm always impressed by that that yeah. there could be this real high level kind of snobbery that like this is some seriously phd level esoteric shit that we're doing here yeah um but in one way it's really not and there's a real basic patch flow mentality that people want to mm. share and yeah there's a lot of sharing yeah totally in. there's a lot of sharing people share ideas all the time and they are happy to do this also you know they are like excited hey look what i found listen to this sound never mind what it is you know it can be all sorts of of uh, uh, genres or all sorts of of sounds and sound design but hey look i've done this look at this this cable goes here and this cable goes here and they have got, and everyone are sharing one with uh, uh, one another and it's amazing yeah it's crazy that's uh, you, you don't see this uh, in other um, communities i guess i don't know I haven't seen it in other genres of music. You know, mm. I, I was in bands for years yeah. and we were all happy to jam and hang out, but there was just a different mentality. It was yeah. a little bit more competitive. Yeah. And I think that in modular too, like we're not all trying to be rock stars here. No, no, there's not so much of a self, yeah, not so much of self, self promotion, but more sharing of ideas and experiences. Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting. Yeah. So, we laughed about this offline that um, Morphogene was the module which got both of us in. Yeah. <laughs> what What is it about that type of granular synthesis that is so yeah. addictive and everybody wants so much? It's yeah. just a riot to, you know, just to play with. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's this aspect of time, you know, that you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you start to change time in real time, you know, you have something, a sample right. that is going, right. you know, you have like a guitar sample or a piano sample or someone speaking, you know, and all of a sudden you go inside of, uh, of every little grain that is in this sound, you know, and you are like manipulating time. And this is, uh, I think it's a, uh, it's a unique and very inviting also. I, I have it also with a, a mimeophone now, which uh, they call it an audio repeater, I think, or something like this. Right. And, and they don't call it a delay. And it really is an audio repeater. It also, you, you, you also have there a lot of uh, play with time because you can play something 
and then actually go back in time when you turn when you turn the um, the scale of the uh, repetitions the intervals between the repetitions you can go actually back in time and listen to things you've done in the last recording you know because everything is still in there so there's a lot this aspect of time of manipulating time in real time is also in the morphogen and also in the uh, mimeophone and it's really attractive actually it's really it's interesting to listen to also you know you take like a sample of a piano and you go inside to the smallest grain it's a really special sound what is the sound that you want to make that you can't make yet in modular you mean uh, the sound sure. i want to make and i cannot make wow i have no idea that's a that's a tough one <laughs> <laughs> well i mean what are sounds which you want to make maybe just which you haven't made yet oh, like man. what yeah. like what keeps you running and grabbing like for the next thing like yeah. what are you chasing i would love to do things similar to what uh, richard divine is doing all this crazy percussive it's also really granular but it's it it's it's really organic also he's doing really organic things that it sounds like a living thing is speaking with you is trying to communicate with you and these things i really want to 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 learn or to exper- experiment to see how i can um, incorporate this also in my music because uh, my music is not in the same direction like richard divines but uh, this organic organic creature sound you know like like the 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 machine is, uh, is that's the language of the machine is doing really a lot of uh, stuff like this and everything is random but sounds in place you know is uh, so something like this i would like to create yeah okay you sent me a track that you just finished um because you made it with mimeo phone that's brand new um why don't you tell us about mallets so in this one i took the i took my son's metallophone actually which is a sort of a xylophone but uh, from uh, out of metal it's just it's a toy it's a toy thing for my son i just took it <laughs> and i've recorded it into the mimeo phone so not really recorded it because you cannot really record but i played it into the mimeo phone and the mimeo phone just was a sort of a looper and so that was the initial idea what i had and it's it started building from there and i got a whole patch and i do this a lot actually i take uh, my son's toys <laughs> i don't know i don't know why but there is something in them you know to make music um with a toy you know it's so trivial you know a toy i mean it's a child's toy what can it do but uh, it can do a lot of things actually
that's actually how I started YouTube. I took uh, stuff for my, my son. I took like a toy keyboard and I sampled it and I destroyed it and mangled it in a sampler in a DAW. Back then I still didn't uh, know VCVREC. And I used to make pads and, uh, and all sorts of instrument out of it. And actually there was also one which was really funny. I, I took his, uh, the baby monitor when he was small, he had also a baby monitor. And I took it and it, it made this beep when it was not connected, but on. And I took this beep <laughs> and I sampled it and I made the Stranger Things theme <laughs> out of it. So it was really cool. So that's where I started falling in love with my son's musical and not musical toys. And actually that's a, a, a secret we weapon of mine. Sometimes when I'm uh, writing something in VCV or never mind on the modular and I have a melody in my head, I just take my son's toy keyboard because it's just there for me, you know, you put it on and it's on, you don't have to connect anything, you don't have to open no VST, no software, and I just play the melody on it, and then I have it also, I know the notes, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. So I use it, I use it a lot, yeah. And always he asks me, where is it, where is it, I want to play it, and I say, no, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, it's in my room. Because <laughs> he doesn't want it until you have it, you know, yeah. and then it changes, right? Yeah, yeah, and then he wants it also, yeah. yeah. So... Sometimes inspiration comes from a song in your head, and sometimes it comes from the module which you're looking at and playing with. Most of the time it comes from the modules and from the sounds that I'm hearing, not in my head, but that I'm hearing from the software or from the modular. But sometimes right. when, I, when I'm in, in the process of building the patch, I have like a melody in my head that I'm singing to myself, and I just want to know the notes. So I reach to the keyboard and I just uh, take it out and... In VCV, it's not a problem just to sequence something, and I can mm -hmm. send it. And I can send it also to my um, hardware. I have the export slippers ES3 and ES6, which are connected through ADAT to my interface, so I can send signals in both directions. If it's um, CV, if it's pitch information, gates, audio, also. So I just, if I want, I create a sequence in VCV and I just send it uh, back to the modular and then the audio back to VCV, send it through effects or whatever I need. And it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's like one, it's like one machine, you know, for me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Truly hybrid. Yeah. Hey, on that point, um, regarding generative versus performance. So some of my favorite um, videos of yours have been when you built these big generative patches in VCV. Yeah. But now with hardware, y you know, you kind of, you're forced almost in a good way to have to interact with it more and have it more, more yeah. of a performance patch. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> talk about how generative versus performance patches works for your workflow. Yeah. So that's, th this is also really interesting. In VCV rec, I really tend to give VCV rec all the power, the modules, they're all the power, they do I, uh, um, everything, they do modulation, they do sequencing. The, I, I'm usually I'm not reaching for the mouse um, to tweak anything, especially 100% not when I record music. When I record music, I look only at the table, what's on the table, and that's it, I don't look at the screen at all, and, I, and I'm not touching the mouse. So everything, I tweak everything what uh, what I want to tweak with my hands, but when I build a patch in VCV again, I tend um, to uh, patch also modulation and to create more generative patches in VCV. Um, first of all, because uh, there is so much fun you can have with the mouse, <laughs> you know, and uh, click with the mouse and uh, look at the screen the whole time. And also, um, then I have time to patch, uh, to tweak things on my modular, on the hardware. And there I tend to tweak everything. If you see, most of the times I'm tweaking. I love this. I love, I love this interaction with the sound. The sound gives me something. I go, I tweak something, and it gives me something else. Again, we're going back to this uh, conversation aspect, having this conversation with the machine. Um, yeah, so in the hardware, I'm tweaking most of the time, and that's that's also the way I'm patching. You know, I keep in mind the stuff I want to do. You know, I I I, I don't um, patch so many modulation um, 
and I tend to do it myself. And in VCV, it's more generative, uh, mostly because of the fact that I don't want to look at the screen while I'm performing. And yeah, and also there is so much you can do with the, with one mouse. I mean, you, you can tweak only one thing at a time. But right, but for this, right. but for this, I have now the MIDI controller, the MIDI LR controller. The sits it sits in the case next to the hardware modules, which is really interesting. Because sometimes I, I don't even know what is MIDI and what is not MIDI. You know, I just reach for it and I turn it and it's there for me to use. So this I also use uh, um, a lot lately, yeah. It's so nice when those lines become blurred and yeah. you're just kind of creating music, you know? Yeah, exactly. I don't even have to think about it. It's just, it's there for me. It's available for me to use if I want without thinking too much, you know? We talk about these things being tools or, you know, instruments and gear acquisition syndrome and all this, but you know, this is one of those times where the lines become blurred and they really are just tools. Yeah. And you're just kind of, it's just coming out of you and you're making music. So we're yeah. not talking about tech. We're not talking about connections and MIDI or yeah. ADAT yeah. or control voltage, yeah. but we're just really letting it rip. Yeah, it's I all just, about- I love those moments. Yeah, at the, end of the day, at the end of the day, it's all about the music and the sounds. This is, uh, this is for me, it's the most important, Never mind what I do. It's always all about the sound or the sounds Absolutely. and the music. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to see this become a career in sound design? What is your hope for this? No, for me, for, uh, sound design, it's really interesting, but I, I, I want to make music. I want to make, uh, to compose music, to create things that weren't there before. I mean, when you think about this, we are, you know, when you make music, you create music, you bring to the world something that was not there before. You know, it's new. You create something. You know, it's really, it's a part of creation if you want, you know. So this is for me the most important. The music is the most important. And I'm trying also in my videos um, also to show this, you know, always the the patch will always have something to do with music at the end. Never mind if you like it, if you don't like it. Um, never mind which genre it is. Sometimes it's ambient, sometimes it's generative, sometimes it's techno, but always it's in it's in context what I'm doing. I'm trying at least, you know, that's uh, because for me the music is the most important. And this is also why I started everything. I made music for years. Sometimes it was acoustic, sometimes it was pure electronic. Um, sometimes, sometimes it was both. Um, but I always wanted to share it and through my channel now I have a chance and I'm lucky enough that uh, you know people enjoy what I do and I can share with them also my music so this is why I started actually everything so I can share my my my, my music actually with everyone or with ones who are interested at least <laughs> once you you had sent me a file called molding atoms would you yeah. set that up for us yeah Sure. So, um, Molding Atoms, it's from an album called Cosmic Foundry, which is again inspired by um, two modules, actually, in this case. One is called, how surprisingly, Foundry, <laughs> um, which is an incredible sequencer from a collection called um, Impromptu Modular, which has lots of nice sequencers, really recommended. And it's a four channel sequencer. Um, which is perfect also for chords and all sorts of uh, chord progressions and stuff like this. So there is also a lot of uh, stuff like this in this album. And also um, another module which is uh, called the Cosmic Oscillator, which is one of my favorite oscillators in VCV. There's uh, no doubt it's a phase distortion oscillator uh, with actually two oscillators inside and you can create really nice textures with it. So the album is called Cosmic Foundry <laughs> after uh, both of those modules and all of the album was inspired and created with those modules. And again, it was all made in uh, VCV. Um, yeah, and that's it. And it's more about, this album is uh, more about chord progressions and stuff like this, uh, which I don't do usually, but uh, I was really inspired by Foundry, so I just went for it.
Okay, so what's next for you, man? What are you working on now? Um, what's in the future? Um, something I really want to do is going live, finally. Taking my music, oh, yeah. out, taking my music outside um, and playing live. This is uh, something I wanted to do until the end of the year or early next year. And I hope I can make it. I'm working hard on, the, on my setup now. Um, a few technical techniques technicalities uh, are missing like a laptop for example <laughs> so i can take also vcv with me but um yeah i'm working on it and i'm building already thinking what i want which kind of direction i want to take and actually the mimeo phone helped me a lot in this direction also because of its capabilities of uh, to loop and to it's really it really is an audio repeater you know just to use it like a sampler looper it's also granular a bit and it gave me new ideas a new inspiration and i'm yeah and i'm building my setup thinking what i can do how i can do it and um, gathering a few things i have now a, 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 a small fm radio i want to take with me and record it to the morphogen and um, so every time i have also something new and spontaneous i want also my my um, uh, general idea is i want to um, improvise a lot i don't want to come uh, with ready things with ready songs this comes now what comes next okay this sound not i want to improvise on the spot and to create the sounds as i go of course i will have the the patch ready and in VCV, I can, ha I can have also a few patches, of course, I can switch. And I just want to improvise and bring voices in and out. This is something I really love about um, modular also, that, uh, again, we, we go back to the aspect of time. When you work in a DAW or you compose for your guitar or your piano, you always stop. Especially in a DAW, you can spend hours on one sound, play, stop, play, stop, play, always stop. Music doesn't flow. I'm not saying this is a bad thing, just it doesn't work for me. But in modular, there is no stopping. You know, you send, you take an oscillator, you put it in the output, it's there. Right. That's it. You cannot, there is no, you don't press the space bar and it stops. Everything is flowing. Everything exists on the, on the uh, axis of time. And for me, this is how it should be. You know, when you look at the painting, for example, never mind which is, uh, what painter this is, you look at the painting and you stop time the painting is still there. But if you listen to music and you stop time, there is no more music anymore. Turn off the lights, you know? There is no more music. <laughs> so music should live or exist on the excess of time. For me at least, you know, this is what inspires me since I found the modular environment. You take an oscillator, you know, you put it in the output, it's there. F sequence... There is no stopping. I mean, of course, there is reset, and sometimes you can play and stop, of course. But most of the times, a sequence, in my music also, it always runs. There is no where it starts and where it stops. It's, it's always, it, the sequence always runs. And me, and this is another thing that I love about Modular, I told you before um, that I wanted to play everything together at the same time, cello and piano and guitar and flute. And this is the perfect solution for me you know it's like being a conductor there was a time i was dreaming of being a conductor you know that i can just stand there and play right. and play everything at the same time in live you know this was yeah. a dream <laughs> and with modular you can do this because you have the voices you know you have all right, the different yeah. voices you bring them in and out and they are always there they're always there for you they're always playing there is no stopping all the time they're just continuously on the excess of time flowing and it's really special and really inspiring. Um, yeah, so again, we'll go back. I want to improvise in my live sessions. Um, this is also something I'm, I'm planning to do. And uh, more things I want to do is also I want to uh, spread the VCV world um, also a bit further. I want to make maybe workshops or stuff like this about VCV, about modular synthesis, uh, just being out there more personal. Um, as much fun as I have making videos, um, it's, it feels weird sometimes because I cannot interact, you know, with the audience, let's say, or with the, someone who is behind the screen. And we cannot have this interaction that maybe 
um, we can both learn something new. So I really want this interaction just to stand there and speak with people and uh, show them, you know, what is VCV and uh, maybe share my ideas about uh, synthesis and uh, in VCV. So this is also something I plan to do in the future. Um, yeah, but again, for me, the most important is the music. So this is the, mo the thing I want to do first. It's just going out there. <laughs> Thank you so much to Amri Cohen for coming in and having such a cool conversation. For anybody with interest in getting into modular synthesizers or understanding synthesis just a little bit better, I really recommend checking out VCV Rack. Awesome piece of software. It's free. And also it's got a great community behind it of programmers and musicians who are making awesome modules that are free. Something we can think about in these strange times are ways that we can help to support each other and get through this. And I think that there's a lot of ways for the small independent artists to be supported and that we should look for these opportunities either on their Bandcamp page or in somebody like Omri's case this Patreon page. And having said that, if you do like this show and appreciate podcasts like this, please consider heading over to patreon.com slash dot wave. I set up a Patreon page a couple months ago, and honestly, it's been really awesome seeing all the people who've wanted to come and be part of supporting this show, even one or three dollars a month. Thank you so much to all my supporters who are helping keep this show going. These are strange times, my friends, and I wish you all health and safety. And just remember that viruses are contagious, but also so is fear and panic and hysteria. And also, <laughs> so is calm and love and enthusiasm and kindness and joy. These are all contagious as well. So please choose wisely. This is John O. Wells, and thank you again for listening to Dot Wave.